Dan, we'll start with the Packers game and your assessment from what we saw Sunday <laughs> night. And are there any positives that we can take away from the performance of the Packers? Well, there was an encouraging first half, right? They had a first half lead at Lambeau Field and it made them feel like they were in a game. And then the bottom fell out again. And they get outscored during one stretch, 31 to three, leave there with a 15 point loss to their rival. Their sixth straight loss to the Packers, drops them to four and nine. They leave Lambeau Field with echoes of some pretty insulting chants from Packers fans in the concourses there at Lambeau Field. So, no, I don't know that there's much positive that you can take out of a double-digit loss to your rival given the state of where this franchise is right now. What grade would you put on Justin Fields, who obviously was playing through pain, yeah. had some nice moments, the pick six as well, obviously some, some moments he wanted back. Yeah, it's just been inconsistent. Three more turnovers against the Packers leaves him with 14 on the year. That's too many, right? And you're going to go through some of that rookie roller coaster with a guy like Fields, and he just has to find a way to steady himself with each performance and each passing game. The turnovers were a problem. He does show the, the, the flashes of promise, particularly did pretty well with his legs, using his scrambling ability to pick up yards, know when to get down, slide, keep himself out of his harm's way. But I don't know that you can go higher than a C- minus for that game. And really, to this point in the season, I'm not sure you can go much higher than that. He's got a rating below 70 in nine starts. The Bears have lost seven of those nine games. And he really hasn't strung together a four-quarter performance that makes you say, 100%, absolutely, that guy is going to be the franchise quarterback for the next decade. So more consistency is needed. With a 4-9 record now, four games to go, who else should the Bears be showcasing over this final four-game stretch? Yeah, I mean, listen, when you're talking about showcasing someone, it starts with Justin because he is the beginning, middle, and end of your story, right? And so everything you do has to put him in position to squeeze the absolute most out of these last four games of the regular season. And so those people who want to see maybe a young rookie receiver like Daz Newsom get activated from the practice squad and play, you say, well, wait a second, the priority is Justin Fields. Those who want to see Tevin Jenkins play more are probably going to get that wish now, but I think we saw on Sunday night why the Bears were sort of slow playing that as much as they possibly could because this is a big ask for a rookie left tackle who had no training camp, no preseason, and no previous game action to come play in live action. And now, with him potentially forced to stay as a starter at left tackle, you are now having to adapt how you bring along your rookie quarterback, right? And so it all really circles back to Justin in so many ways. Defensively, I still want to see some uh, continued growth out of Jalen Johnson, who I believe has been one of the few bright spots for this team all year long. And to see him continue to come along, I think that's a guy you look at for on that side of the ball. You had a big deep dive in the Tribune on the tenuous futures of Matt Nagy, Ryan Pace, and Ted Phillips. What's at stake for those men over the final four games? And have things already been decided for some? Yeah, we'll see, right? And there's a lot at stake for obvious reasons. Three years ago, the Bears entered the 2019 season feeling like their Super Bowl window was opening, right? You remember the energy that surrounded this franchise throughout the summer of 2019, all the way up until the season opener against the Packers to open the 100th season for the league. Ever since then, what are we looking at? We're looking at 20 wins over three seasons, a four and nine record here, another year that's gonna go past without a playoff victory. And so when you take the big picture lens on this, significant change is needed. You know, it's needed in a lot of pockets in this building and it's up to George McCaskey, the board of directors, to some extent Ted Phillips, to determine what the next steps are. There's a lot at stake. A lot of people, as you mentioned, between Ted and George and Ryan and Matt Nagy, whose jobs are on the line and now they have to decide what decisions they want to make and which direction they want to go. They haven't been really public with, with letting us on to which direction they're going to head. Another theme we've seen from the Bears over the last few years, end of the season, they might not be playing for much, but their opponents Maybe the Vikings in this case, they play Minnesota <laughs> twice over the final four games, yeah. Monday night at Soldier Field. How do you see this one going down? Yeah, it's really interesting because the Vikings are one of those teams that may be looking at their own changes when the season ends. But right now, because the NFC added this seventh seed for the playoffs, they're right in the thick of the playoff race, right? And so they're going to come to Soldier Field plenty motivated. You saw what Dalvin Cook did a week ago playing with a very injured shoulder and putting the harness on and gutting it out against the Steelers and exploding. The Bears are going to have to contain him. They're going to have to figure out ways to slow down Kirk Cousins to Justin Jefferson. I just haven't seen enough consistently from this team on both sides of the ball. The defense has been disappointing this year. Hasn't had multiple takeaways in a game since week four, Josh. That's way too long. They are middle tier in so many key categories, down near the bottom of the league in takeaways for the season. I don't know that they can pull off the home upset. I'm not sure they're going to get much juice from the home crowd. And so here we are, broken record again. Vikings coming in Soldier Field and adding another loss to the Bears.